Alrighty, everybody. So this is a title effect that I've used recently in a few videos that I figured I'd share with you guys. It's almost like this digitize on effect with your text. And it's actually fairly straightforward to do. You just kind of need the right combination of notes. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Alrighty, so we've got DaVinci Resolve open. And we could either do this one or two ways. You could go ahead and drag and drop in a fusion composition in here, go into fusion and add a text plus node. Or what you could do and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over to my effects menu, go to the titles and drag and drop in a blank text plus node. Now I'm working on a 1080p timeline at 30 FPS. This isn't gonna matter for you and your own projects, but just figured I'd let you know. And unfortunately, we cannot do the things that we wanna do just on the edit page. While there are a lot of controls, what we're gonna have to do is either right click on this text plus node and hit open in fusion, or just click this little magic wand. Let's go ahead and hop into fusion. Now for this particular title animation, I'm gonna say there's two parts. There's gonna be the first part, which is gonna be the actual animation effect. And then the second part will be the actual look of this to make it feel a little bit more digital. So we're gonna start with the animation first and then go into the look in the second half. And so one of the first things that we wanna do to make this feel a little bit more digital is uh, choose a good font. Now there's no wrong answer for this, but the one that I'm using is called LCD phone lcd phone it's this uh blocky kind of pixel 8 bitty looking kind of font it's a completely free font if you go to dafont.com and type in lcd phone you should be able to find it or you can use whatever you'd like and if you've never installed a new font before you will need to restart davinci resolve after installing the font for it to appear on screen now from here we can do our animation and the animation is going to live all within one node and i'm going to go ahead and add in the uh, mosaic blur node. This is gonna be the key to our effect. Now there's gonna be a few nodes that we add in here. So I'm gonna move fairly quickly so that we can get through this tutorial on time. But what we're gonna wanna do is first, we're gonna drag down the aliasing of our mosaic blur. And what this does is it kind of turns off the soft edges of our pixelation. And then we're gonna decrease our pixel frequency. And I'm gonna go to, I don't know, 20? Yeah, let's do 20. That seems like a nice even number. Now I'm gonna go to the beginning of our composition and then I am going to add a keyframe. So I'm at frame zero. I'm gonna put a keyframe on our pixel frequency and then I'm gonna go forward a second. So again, I'm on a 30 FPS timeline. So that's gonna be 30 frames forward for me. And then we are going to increase our pixel frequency all the way to the max and 200 seems like it's still not quite enough. So I'm gonna type in 300. And now we're getting pretty close. But what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to blend off this effect. So if you wanted to, what you could do is actually, you know, increase your pixel frequency to like 600 or even a thousand or whatever you need to do. But I'm gonna fade off this effect. And I'm gonna just go a couple frames before this last one. So I'm on frame 25. I'm gonna go to the settings, keyframe the blend. And then I'm gonna go a couple frames after frame 30 and change our blend to zero. And so now it kind of looks something like this, right? So if I were to go from beginning to end, this is what we're looking like. And you know, play with the timings as you will. I'm gonna go over to our spline window over here. We've got both our graphs pulled up for our key framed properties. i refit this real quick. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control A to select both graphs here and then F to flatten them. And that'll ease in and out both of these properties. So again, now if I play this, whoop, we got a nice little digitize on effect. Now, if you wanted to, something else you can do in here is add in a transform node. Go to the beginning of your composition, set a keyframe on the size, go to that 30-ish frame mark, keyframe the size again, go back to the beginning and increase the size just a little bit. And even though it's a small thing, I don't know, I just feel like it kind of helps it look uh, like it's digitizing on screen. And what I'm gonna do is with my transform node selected, I'm gonna look at the graph there, hit F to smooth, and then drag this top handle down. We got a nice ramp out for our size. So that's the animation itself. If that's all you were looking for, congrats. From here, what we're gonna do is make it look more good, more better. Now, if you're ever struggling with how to make things look the way you want them to look, well, it's okay to look for inspiration. And one of the places that you can do that are sites like Behance. And for this particular animation, I found this mock-up that Mr. Michael Wrigley did for Cyberpunk 2077. And it's this whole breakdown of the design of some of the UI that they used within, I don't know if this is actually used in the game or not, but I just thought this was really cool. There's like a soft, almost like retro glow. If we zoom in here, 
you can see some scan lines and one of the cool effects that they have is almost this like layering of whatever UI element that's being put into place. So when I'm looking to create effects, what I'll do is I'll take something like this and try to reverse engineer it in DaVinci and mine isn't gonna look one to one, but we can get close, you know? Let me go ahead and minimize this. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a glow and I'm gonna use the very basic glow. It's the, not soft glow or anything like that. It's this glow right here. And I'm just gonna decrease the glow size a little bit and leave the gain alone for now. Let me just scrub forward a little bit so we can see our title here. Let me go ahead and stack these nodes up just a little bit so we got a little more real estate to work with, okay? So we've got our text template, mosaic blur, transform, glow. Now the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna try to introduce that like layering effect. And so the way that you could do that is just with a duplicate node. Go ahead and add our duplicate node in here. And I'm gonna add in, we could do maybe three or four copies. Let's start with three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the center position down just a smidgen, a very small amount. You don't want a lot. Well, I mean, maybe you do want a lot, but I'm just gonna go a little bit off to the right. And then all we need to do is decrease our blend a little bit. And what this will do is it'll fade out each copy. And if we zoom in on the corner, you can see how that affects it. And I believe for mine, I went to 0.5. Nice even number. And you know what, real quick, I'm sorry, I know I'm kind of going a little bit backwards, but let's go, let's change our color so that we're not just the basic white. Uh, let's do maybe a nice, oh, this is kind of cool. Got this like off, off orange looking text. It's kind of fun. And again, from here, you can add in whatever you'd like. You could add scan lines. I believe for mine, I did not, but I do know that I added in some grain and I believe we're just gonna use the very basic grain here and that adds just some roughness to our colors. So if I were to toggle this on and off, you can see how it affects that. And I've probably said it 600 times this video, but again, change the properties to feel however you'd like. And I think the last thing that I do, normally when I do anything kind of digital, uh, <laughs> one of my go-to cruxes is to add some chromatic aberration. And that's gonna live up in your effects tab in the Fusion page. You're gonna go to, I believe, templates. If you click on the, uh, the templates option here and then search for chromatic aberration, uh, you should see this tool right here and go ahead and drag and drop that in. And that's gonna add these uh, little fuzzes off the side here. So again, if I were to play this from beginning to end, We got a pretty fun looking digitize effect. And if you wanted to, what you can do is you can actually take this text plus preset, go into your media pool, you can drag and drop it up in here and now you'll have access to it for this project. Or what you can do is you can toggle on your power bins, go and drag it into your power bins folder and that will give you access to this effect across any project. And if you are looking to save it as an actual title preset for you to drag and drop in from the effects tab, I will link a video that'll walk through how to do it. There's a ton of different ways to save presets and macros. And so if you're curious about how to do something like that and save it over here, I will leave a link to do that. But I hope this helped you guys and I will catch you in the next one.